Hello everybody, and as CK2 plays some holiday music for us, I will be starting this next series. This, we are going back to the A Game of Thrones mod. It's been updated, it looks very nice, and well, uh, there's a little bit of spoilers for who we're going to be playing as. Start with, we are an Ironborn Iron King of the Drowned God religion, if that is that enough iron for you. Basically, we can raid and do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, this series will be significantly shorter than my previous ones, as we will be mostly focused around the objectives of the character, and maybe go on to a little bit of inheritance around him, but not really focused on keeping his line going forward. Um, th this is mostly just because uh, I felt like playing a shorter series, and I thought that this would be a hoot with the uh, season of Game of Thrones coming out on Blu-ray, and people actually being able to go, Oh yeah, us, us lot that don't have HBO, uh, now we get to go watch it. Um, there's a few spoilers as to who we're playing as. So yeah, we're playing in a feast for crows, so there's the usual spoiler warning. If you have not read the books, this will contain spoilers for you, because uh, newsflash, the mod runs off of the books. Uh, if you don't care about book spoilers or have already read the book, please continue watching. If you do care about book spoilers, I recommend not watching this series very much, uh, because while this gentleman is in the show at long last, uh, he's not exactly the same in the show as he is in the books. But to start with, uh, no, I really do need to get rid of this thing first. Very well. The Iron Islands is in a state of war. Strangely enough, in Feast for Crows, practically everyone is at war with everyone else, except Dorn. Uh, so yeah, we get the pleasure of starting a war, that's half the point of playing the start date. Um, and we are at war with bum -ba bum the Reach. Fun fact, Sigurd is not Cersei's bitch, and does not in fact wait on her hand and foot when she's a queen. And she's not a queen yet, but anyway, details. Uh, he's very busily trying to steal the Reach out from under the Tyrells, which is a bit of a problem considering that's one of the seven kingdoms and he is most certainly not bowing to any milk drink here. I mean, <coughs> Greenlander, uh, that sits upon the Iron Throne. So, details. Um, other details is the character of Euron is extremely different between the shows and the books. In the shows, he's sort of this dick-joke-telling uh, asshole. Um, I mean, he's kind of that in the books, too. Uh, but in... In the books, he is truly a little more uh, weird, different, and badass. Uh, first up, he has a Vivillian Steel set of armor, which is amazing. Um, like It's the only set of Vivillian Steel armor you see ever. Uh, he has to ship the Silence, which you could argue did show up in the shows, so details. And he has this wonderful little horn called Dragon Binder, uh, which may or may not actually uh, bind dragons to people. And he gives this to his... Uh, brother who's not in the shows at all for some reason. I don't understand. Oh, they finally made him dumb. That's good. Anyway, ah, uh, sorry. I got distracted. Anyway, um, Euron's big master plan, at least as we think it might be, is to feign to take these, the Shieldlands, sort of kind of abandon them, go down here, take uh, Old Town, he's in the process of doing this in the books, and generally make the Reachmen run around like they're a cat with a head stuck, stuck in a paper bag. Meanwhile, his brother Victorion goes over to Marine to offer him his service to a certain dragon queen. As such, I'm marking her right now because Danny tends to be a bit of a nuisance in this. Just tends to be, you know? Good old Danny. Uh, I'm just going to mark Aegon of Essos right here. Uh, we, uh, You should know who he is if, if you've read the books. If you're not, I'm not really going to explain him for you right now. Might when I do a series on him. I gotta mark Duran because Duran. Uh, you never know what he's up to. Uh, Mace is a definite mark because we're at war with him. Also, um, fun facts. The shows have cut out a couple of more important people out of the major families. Uh, namely, Victarion, who is our brother, who we hate. Um, you think Greyjoys get along with each other? Oh, hell no. Um, basically, we stole his sort of kind of wife, uh, and he hates us for it, and he had to kill his wife, because iron price things. Um, basically, he hates our guts these days. Uh, we were banished for it by our dear late brother Balon, huh? I wonder what happened to him. We murdered him! Um, <clears throat> and we have our other dear brother, 
Oh, yeah, the Golden Storm. I forgot he had that. Uh, Aaron, damp hair in prison. If that loosely sums up the deal at the moment. Also, in the books, the Kraken's daughter is imprisoned by Stannis and Biasha. Uh, she's rather important. I will actually make note of her already because, quite frankly, she's pretty cool. She has her ship, the Black Wind. It's awesome they finally put the boats in now. I like that. And Theon is, of course, Reek at the moment. And, well, you know, being held by Roose, but really Ramsay. Details. Uh, I'm going to mark Roosie boy because I like knowing what goes down in the north, and I'm pretty sure you guys do too. I'm, of course, going to mark... Lord Commander Jon Snow, because I'm pretty sure you guys would revolt on me if I didn't. And uh, let's go find Stannis. He should be there. There we go. I like Stannis. Stannis is the madness. He's still alive and well at the moment. Whether or not he'll win, nobody knows. These things happen. <clears throat> I can't forget who Mark Robert. That is Robert Aaron. His name is not Robin. And Peter ba Baelish, because... Hey, they actually fixed his portrait. It looks kind of like him now. Uh, the damn phrase always need to be marked because it's the damn phrase. Uh, and did I get Cersei? Yes, now I have. And, of course, little Tommen. Man, he's nine. I keep forgetting that because they aged him up for the shows. Uh, but, yeah, and a couple of the other people who have been skimmed out of the shows are Mace's kids. Namely, Willis, who's the actual heir, who is a bit of a cripple. Um... And then Garland the Gallant, who is total badass. Um, both of these are Loras' elder brothers. They really only show you Loras, who in this joined the King's Guard because reasons, uh, details that I'm not going to really extrapolate upon because I don't really want to spoil everything in the books, you know? And of course, Marjorie, who's married practically everyone with a claim on the Iron Throne known to mankind. Um, <clears throat> and a couple that weren't. Well, no, entirely people that were. She's not that smart. Anyway, um, let's now get down to the fine business of uh, killing people. So I'm going to set us for war because we are at war. I know, so dull. Uh, even though he's extraordinarily good at intrigue, uh, partially because he's a little bit magic and a little bit mad, um, I'm actually surprised he's not insane. I I'm actually surprised. I guess arbitrary fits him a little more, and cruel most certainly fits him. So we are gregarious, arbitrary, lustful, I mean, duh, uh, cruel, brave, ambitious, ruthless. We are a mystic because we like playing around with the goodness that is uh, magic. Uh, he is one of very few people who has messed about with magic in the show. As you know, the world of George R. R. Martin is low fantasy. Which basically means magic sort of exists, but most people don't get to play with it. He does. Uh, he's evidently a torturer. Um, yeah, he cut out the tongues of everyone on his ship. He kind of has his brother messed with in spoilers. Um, he's known as a reaver. Because while he was exiled, he basically mucked around over here in Essos and everywhere. He claims he's been everywhere over here raiding and pillaging and getting money uh like all the graduates <clears throat> but you know how much do you believe him i don't really believe him for much of course we had to note the iron victory because i'm astounded all these boats are here um but yeah euron is one of those characters that you gotta sit there and go huh do i believe him nope um that being said he's hilarious uh not hilarious, he's, he's a fucking sadist. Uh, but reading anything that has to do with Euron tends to be amusing. Uh, I say it's amusing in that it is interesting, not that I am uh, in any way, shape, or form uh, supporting him. Uh, he, he's basically Westeros Hitler, but at the same time, he makes things interesting. I thought they faced around. Nice! They put him in. That makes me happy. Of course, we have everyone's favorite Ironborn with us because we are the Iron King, uh, which means you know, all these wonderful guys like Dagmir and Thormor Ironmaker, um, Tarly Th Thrystorm, Burton Humble, Siegfried Goodbrother, you know, basically everyone who's ever been mentioned in the books are here. Also, interestingly enough, in this series, they interpret that Victarion is a follower of Lor, or uh, Azor, uh, sorry, Rawler. 
Um, no, that's the same thing. Why am I spacing? Um, ah, basically, he's been converted by a red priest. Um, I'm not entirely sure that he has been. I'm pretty sure he's more of a bit of a dualist between um, the Drown God and Rillor. Um But that's my interpretation, and I'm pretty sure they couldn't easily put that in the game. So I think what they did is made him uh, Rillor, made him favored by Rillor because we've seen magic work on him. And he has sympathy for the Drown God. I'm actually not flaming piss mad at this. This is about right. It smells right to me. We'll leave it at that. Um, I'll take it, you know? Anyway. Um, but yeah. Euron's a bad dude. His ambitions are batshit. We know from several places that he's probably the closest thing that Westeros has to pure evil. That being said, here we are playing as him. Because... Being the good guy is lame. Anyway. <clears throat> we have a boatload of dudes. Actually, we have many, many, many boatloads of dudes. Uh, sitting in the Shield Islands. I'm going to take them because we might as well. We basically already have. The Tyrells are a little bit broken up. They have more mana than us, though. They have 39,000. I've got 32,000. And we're on hard mode. Like, you know, we are on hard difficulty. I do not play at, uh, uh, easy, you know. I, I am playing this on hard. Just putting that out there for when I get hate in the comment section. We are in hard mode. Deal with, you know. Um, that's just the thing I like to start with because I have had more people say, You're not in hard mode, I see your armies just dissolving them. Uh, guys, it's Game of Thrones. When you have dudes with, like, 30 fucking martial armies, it just sort of dissolve in front of them. Anyway, let's raise some more dudes. We can't really. We'll raise our vassals, though, which is good. And get their boats. And if I can get them all on their boats, that would make me amazed. Oh, yeah, we can get them on their boats already. That makes me happy. Um, I'm now going to get them all together over here, just in case... And we're going to just take a quick little look around the guys underneath of us because I'm going to mark some of them. Because Roderick the Reader is worth marking because he doesn't really like us. Uh, actually, no, he kind of does like us. Oh yeah, we impressed him. Never mind. Um, for various reasons. Um, Harris the Knight's the guy who doesn't really like us that much. My bad. Wrong way around. <clears throat> Too many Harlars. Um, let's go over here. I'm going to mark the good brothers, because you always need to mark a good brother. I like marking the far ones. They don't really matter all that much, but I just find them fascinating. Um, because they amuse me. Uh, I'll mark the black tides too, I guess. Basically, everyone under us is about to get marked. Uh, the orcwoods. Of course, the botleys. You need to mark them more the botleys. They're going to scheme and be assholes. And Saltcliff, because he might die and, you know, leave his land to us, because... T E. Anyway, I'm going to uh, pick our ambition. First things first, we're going to get married. I know Euron probably wouldn't, um, just because Euron, uh, but for the game of CK2, you kind of need to get married. Yeah, we have some very solid options for heirs, and yes, we are a king's moot, which means that it's an elected monarchy. Uh, but merely having these sorts of uh, relationship boosts between you and your vassals, which is pretty much who we have to choose from because we're only really capable of marrying Drown God, or I will only allow us to. Um, this isn't saying I'm not going to take concubines left, right, and center because we're ironborn. Of course we are. Um, but I'm going to try to keep this somewhat contained in what we're allowed to do just because it wouldn't really make sense otherwise. You know, constrain yourselves. And yes, I can already read the comments section. We, we clearly have a list of people who need to become, uh, well, you know, concubines. Uh, first among which is probably Danny, <clears throat> with her three dragons. Yes, we need to steal ourselves a dragon, because Euron riding a dragon makes me horrified. Well, Victorian riding a dragon. I've actually gotten Victorian riding a dra dragon in previous iterations of the game before I became a YouTuber, but, you know, those aren't streams, so they don't really count. Tee -hee -hee. Um, I could upgrade the holding down there of Cod Hall. 
I don't really feel like it. Do let's go designate some stuff. First up, we need two more commanders. Eldred Harlaw makes me scared for existence, and Eric Anvilbreaker. He's infirm though. Is he? Yeah, no, he'll get himself killed. Let's go with humble. Anyway, this is our court. They are all pretty fucking amazing. <clears throat> If I do say so myself, the Harlaw is actually very good, and I am impressed. Uh, the Master of Laws is probably the one dude that's a little bit lacking in here, but 12 ain't bad. It's just not great. And I'll keep him. Um, I'm tempted to make this Victarion, because it should be Victarion, but I'll keep it as the guy who's landed. Also, in this I am a little bit annoyed. Because uh, Victarion's not landed, and he's the commander of the Iron Fleet, which is... I I don't know how they'd handle this, because he isn't actually controlling land, which is how CK2 controls things. But he's arguably one of the more important people in the Iron Islands. Even though we lost the King's Moot, we beat him in the King's Moot and the rest of that. He's important. He's also likely going to be our heir. I'm just sticking that one out right now. He could very well be our heir. Just cuz. Cuz, for all we know, Theon's about to get hung, and uh, so it's the same with Asha. Also, Asha is likely to be dead last for the line. Uh, she's also married non matrilineally, which is bad, and, and various other issues are here as well. Being said, the Iron Makers are awesome, and we need to take care of them because they are our people, even though Euron probably doesn't give a shit about them because it's Euron. Uh, I'm going to make sure they're married and continuing these strong traits around, just in case we actually end up playing this game a little longer than I want to. Because that could happen. For all I know, I'll end up with a Victarion riding a dragon in this, and I can't stop that. I can't. I can't control myself, guys. <clears throat> that being said, if you liked this so far, please leave a like. Let me know you are enjoying the setup of the series, and I will keep this thing rolling on a very steady basis. That being said... Sorry for that. Things are in my way. There we go. <clears throat> Let us begin. Time is finally starting now. Alrighty. We're very busily ripping things up. I could make a 58-year-old my salt wife. Yeah, no, I didn't think so either. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Tarley has captured somebody's... Oh, yeah. Philia Flowers, who technically is our concubine in the book, but yeah, I don't care. <clears throat> Alrighty. Stannis sends out his letter because, of course, he does. And Euron's opinion on this is I don't give a shit. Uh, that being said, eh. so first up, in the show, Euron sides with the Lannisters. This would never happen. Because, frankly, Euron wants nothing to do with them at all. So I'm going to go, of course I should have known, because, frankly, we're about to be at war with them. Victorian has already gone and got himself a name already. He's now known as the Hammer of South Shield, because he's apparently kicked ass. Which is pretty much an accurate statement. <clears throat> now, what are we going to do with all these pile of men, as the even larger pile of men come running at us? I'm going to let him run a second. Uh, so th for those of you who are uh, diligent book readers, uh, Piat's Pre, Piat, yeah, so much fun to say, uh, is imprisoned by us, along with our dear, well, not really dear brother. Um, we know that he had Piat Pre tortured to death. He mutilated him to gain magic. And he's been drinking straight of the evening with his one weird-ass eye and all the rest of this cool shit that makes you run fun to play. The problem is, the game doesn't really support that all that great because he's just Drown God Ironborn. That being said, I'm pretty sure we could justify joining a satanic cult because we're you're on fucking Greyjoy. Um, I'm not sure if we will, though, just because it's a lot to handle while at war. I'm, I'm not sure about a couple things here. So first things first, I am fairly certain that no matter what action I take to Piat Pri in this, I will not actually gain any magic powers. That annoys me. 
But I understand. It just annoys me. Oh god. The second piat is also named Piat. How many piats are there? Excuse me a second. Are they all piat? Good, not all piat. Had to check. Anyway. <clears throat> Back on subject. Um so I'm not really tempted to he can't pay for himself yet, and he, he's just going to sit there for a while. I don't really want to get the Kingslayer for killing Arion here. Also, I'm fairly certain that Euron would want to keep him alive to watch this. Um, not that he'd actually care all that much. I'm just stating, I'm pretty sure he wants somebody to witness this. Namely, him. Alright, we already have 19% War Score against Macy Boy. Macy Boy is in King's Landing with a giant pile of men probably coming directly this way. But he's all the way in King's Landing. And we're on an island. Out over here. In the middle of fuck all nowhere. And hopefully our boats will get here. If our boats don't get here, this might be a very, very short series. Oh no, what have you done? You've stolen Crab's Pincer. You already have two Valyrian steel blades. Really? Oh god. Actually, sorry. One Valyrian steel blade, one crap blade that was named by Joffrey because, duh. Uh, and Robert Torhammer and some other things. But you, you just stole another Valyrian steel blade? What are you gonna do? Dual wield them? <sighs> Fucking Lannisters. I'm gonna issue more Kevin just cause. I might work Lancel. Nah, screw Lancel. <clears throat> I might have married into the wrong setup, good brother. I did. Shit. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. She was the only one. Uh, okay, we've done that. Now our ambition is very clearly to win the damn war, because duh. Not saying that I think Euron actually cares about this conflict all that much. I'm just saying that we should care to win this war, because that's what the series is about here. Uh, we're going to throw my brother in the oubliette, though, because, duh. And they complain about it, because he's technically our brother. Even though we just threw him in the oubliette. Or the oubliette, however you prefer to say it. I'm rather a fan of oubliette. Anyway, let's bind all of these guys together. And yes, I know the Reach has a giant fucking navy coming at us. Being said, it is small compared to ours. And hopefully, they are going to the Iron Islands. Yes, they are. Lucky us. They're going to do the dumb thing the AI wants to go do and siege our useless rocks. Lucky us. We're going to go and uh, take what matters. <clears throat> that being said, I'm putting Dagmar Cleftjaw in charge in the middle of this thing. Thoromir can go on that side, and I would like... Uh, the Harlaw can do it. Notice I have not put myself here, nor Victarion here, because Victarion has a bigger job to complete. And I'm the king, you know, I should be sieging things. <clears throat> I'm too important, and Victarion has better things to be doing at the moment. Anyway, Jon Snow and all of his stupidity has attacked the White Walkers for the War for the Dawn. We'll see how well that one goes. Oh man, they made the White Walkers look awesome. And Crystal Swords, oh... I love what they've done with this. Bunch of... Ah. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Anyway. Sorry, I keep getting distracted by the littler details in this. It makes me happy. Anyway. I'm glad to see that they've really um, started to fix this game a lot. And it's coming along well. That being said, let's go get Old Town. I don't care. There's a theory floating around that Euron is going to help the White Walkers. Um, we can't really do that in this game. I mean, I suppose we could. We could go up and raid the wall. But, um, no. Not worth it. It's simply not worth it. Um, that being said, it's already been about 20-ish minutes, and I kind of want to keep this part a little bit shorter, so I'm just going to wait until these couple of fort levels go down, because might as well, and I'll start the series up on the next one, as Littlefinger has gone off and tried to declare himself Lord of the Trident against Edmure Tully, who I forgot to mark, because usually he gets his ass kicked in about two seconds. 
He's 7% in favor of King Tommen against him on that one. And Peter Baelish is about to come in here with, uh, I don't want to know how many men. Uh, 6,000 men. Yeah, yeah, that's that's going to go great. <clears throat> against 996. Yeah, he's doomed. Um, the Tully line might be utterly destroyed pretty soon. That being said, I hope you've all have liked watching this content. I intend to keep creating more of it. Um... Euron is, in my opinion, one of the more interesting characters in the Game of Thrones, and frankly, Victarion is awesome. This gives us the opportunity to perhaps play as Victarion and definitely play as Euron, two of the, I think, often overlooked characters in the Game of Thrones, because they're the bad guys. Well, he's certainly a bad guy. Victarion's just... okay, he's, he's, he's also a bad guy, but he's way less evil than Euron is. Euron is evil incarnate. Victarion's just ironborn. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please like and or subscribe if you wish to continue uh, to be notified about this series quickly. Um, enjoy. We will be back in part two, uh, which will probably air at around the same time as this. Uh, so keep watching if you are enjoying. Uh, if not, well, you know, keep looking around. Thank you guys.